morning. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and to be led together. Thank you that you made time to join us in the presence of the Lord. There's a word for you this morning. My name is Tabu Mohotlani and we trust God to minister to your life this morning to change your situation, to become a better person. Never lose hope. Don't even decide or think of throwing in the towel. As long as God has put a comma in your life, don't put a full stop. God has a purpose concerning your life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless every soul that is listening and watching over this program. Let the anointing that is on me overflow into their lives right now. Their stubborn situation, I rebuke them to give way. Let the Holy Spirit be the leader and the guider of their lives. In fact, right now, I invoke the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now to quicken up your mortal body body. Let the spirit of the living God open up the eyes of your understanding. I speak revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and the spirit of discernment. Father, you said your Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Guide each and every one of us into all the truth of God. Let your word this morning be acceptable and receivable. Right in the midst of the valley, you are able to come down to the pit where we are and pull us and place our feet on the king's highway. We worship you, we honor you, we glorify your name this morning. Tato and Neahaumudim, above everything else, in the only name that makes sense, the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. Come on, hold your Bible. We're going to get straight into the word of God. And the word is powerful than a two-edged sword. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Just say, this Bible is God speaking to me. I believe. I receive the word of God as the truth. Nothing but the truth for my life. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. And we welcome you one more time. We're going to share the word of God together. It's Sunday morning, and when it's Sunday morning, you know that something good is about to happen to your life this morning in the name of Jesus. Please open with me to the book of Second Samuel, chapter number 9. 2 Samuel, chapter number 9. There's a word that we need to pick up from that part of scripture. God has something in store for you. 2 Samuel, chapter number 9 is in the Old Testament. 2 Samuel, chapter number 9. We are reading from 2 Samuel, chapter number 9. It reads... As thus, verse number three, it says, The king, who is David in this context, said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the mercy and the kindness of God? Then Ziba replied, Jonathan has yet a son who is lame in his feet. And the king said, Where is this son? Ziba replied, He is in the house of Micaiah, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. God. Verse number five. The king said, The king David sent and brought him. From the house of Micaiah, son of Amiel, at Lodabar. And Mephiboseth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. David said, Mephiboseth. And he answered, Behold, your servant. Then David said to him, Fear not, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. And I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father or your grandfather, 
and you shall eat at my table always. And the cripple bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? My God. Hmm. Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house, and you shall till the land for him, you and your sons and your servant, and you shall bring in the produce, that your master's hair may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son or grandson, shall eat always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do according to all my lords the king commands. So Mephibosheth ate at the table's table as one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a son whose name was Micah, and all who dwelt in Ziba's house were servants to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, comma, even though he was lame in both his feet. My God, my God, my God. May God bless the reading. Hmm. My God, the one who was lame at the, at the king's table, even though both of his feet were lame. <laughs> Allow me to speak to you this morning on the subject I've titled, Lodeba is not your dwelling place. Lodeba is not your dwelling place. I know this morning I might be speaking to somebody who is now in a situation or an environment called Lodeba. For those who don't understand the meaning of the word Lodeba, it means a place of no pasture, meaning the animals cannot feed in a place of Lodeba because there is no green grass in Lodeba. Lodeba was a place of a desert where there was no pasture. Nobody could even have a field to grow vegetables in Lodeba. Now Mephibosheth, who is the grandson of King Saul, Saul had a son by the name of Jonathan, and Jonathan had a son by the name of Mephibosheth. Now to help you, let me take you back history-wise. David, before he became a king of Israel, he was also one of the servants that served in the house of the king called Saul. But the problem was that Saul didn't like David. Why? You remember the incident of David and Goliath, whereby the Israelites went to the battle to fight against the Philistines. Now it happened that when the soldiers of Israel, they were in the battle, in those days they used to fight, not just go into the battle and fight. But when they were at the battlefield, both soldiers, they will appoint a commander and this commander will wake up in the morning just to throw curses at the opposition before they fought the battle. Now it happened that this time, David was not a soldier, but he was still a shepherd taking care of his father's flock. Then his father, Jesse, called David over and said, You know what? Your brothers have gone to the battle. I need you to take provision for them at the battle.
battlefield and check on them how is the battle going and bring me the report so that I may continue to meditate on their behalf. And David took the provision and went to the battlefield to go and give provision to his brothers and find out how the battle is going so that he can go back and report to his father. Coincidentally, when David arrived at the battlefield, is the time the commander of the chief of the soldiers of the Philistine by the name of Goliath came up to throw out curses towards the enemy in this context, the Israelites. And the Bible says Goliath was a giant in stature. Now the whole army of Israel was frightened, was in fear of one man called Goliath. Now David came into the picture and he heard Goliath throwing curses upon the Israelites, cursing the Israelites through his own gods, cursing the God of the army of Israel. And this provoked anger on the inside of David and went to his brothers and asked a question, how can you allow this uncircumcised Philistine to curse you by his God while your God is much bigger than his God? And his brothers tried to rebuke him and told him, man, you can't do this. This man is a giant. He has been trained to fight in the battle. Just shut up. You are a young boy. And David said, no, no, no. Give him to me and I'll show you what we do with this kind of uncircumcised Philistine. And they took the way to the king, Saul. And so, Saul, there's a young boy here. He, he, he wants to fight this, this giant. And he's not even trained in the battle. And Saul called over this young boy. And he tried to give him the armament of a soldier, they gave him the shield, they gave him the, the arrow to go and fight with this giant. But the Bible says when David tried to move with this armament, he couldn't move a feed because he was not used to them. The message that I'm bringing to you is that when you fight the battle in the spirit, use the armament that you know can destroy the devil in the spirit. My armament might not be the same as your weapons. Use the weapons that you are comfortable with. And David took out those armaments and he took over what he knows, five stones in his hands to go and fight in the battlefield. And the Bible says, when the Philistine came to him with all the armaments that he knows in the battle, that he trusts so much, that he won battles with, and he cast David with his gods, that you come to me with a stick and five stone, I'm going to destroy you. But David, when he saw the giant, he did not back down because he told Saul that your servant David, as you see me, while I'm taking care of my father's sheep in the field out there, one day came a lion and I went and took that lion by the bear and killed it. One day came a bear and I went after that bear and I killed it also. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine before me? Because God gave me victory in the field when you are not there and he will also give me victory in public just like it is. That's why I always tell people, make sure that your private victory must also precede your public victory. You can't go out and perform a miracle in public while you have never done it in private. David knew that God gave him victory in a private place. Is the same God who's still able to give him victory in a public place. And he went and he defeated Goliath only with one stone. Goliath was dead. After that, he took the sword of Goliath and cut his head. And guess what? When they went back home, when they arrived at home, the women of the city celebrated the victory of the soldiers of Israel over the Philistine. But the problem about this victory is that they composed a song. The lyrics of the song goes like this. David defeated 10,000 Philistine soldiers. Saul defeated 1,000 Philistine soldiers. And when Saul heard the lyrics of the song, it provoked him to anger because 
David was not even a soldier. He was just a servant, a shepherd boy, but he is the king of Israel. In fact, when they won the battle, all the praises must come to the king. But in this instant, the praises, they go out to this young boy who's not even a soldier, who's not even a commander of the soldier, who's not even related to the king. But the king gets a lower level of praise as compared to David. And from that day on, David was an enemy towards Saul. Saul wanted to kill David at all costs. But what surprises me, Saul had a son by the name of Jonathan. Jonathan was not an enemy to David. They were friends. And one day they made a covenant that, look, you are my bomba, I'm your bomba. You are my scheme, I'm your scheme. Now I want us to make a covenant. If it happens that one of us dies before, I want the remaining party to take care of my family household so that they shouldn't suffer. So that means if I, as David, die today, you, Jonathan, you're going to take care of my wife and my kids and all my siblings so that they mustn't suffer. And vice versa on the other side, if Jonathan dies, that means you, David, you're going to take care of all the siblings that belongs to Jonathan. That is the covenant that they made between themselves. And it happened down the years that Jonathan died. And David, he was anointed as a king and he became the king of Israel. Also Saul died. Where we are reading in 2 Samuel chapter 9, David is now the king of Israel. And while he's sitting in his chamber, he remembered that I once made a covenant with my brother Jonathan. Have I blessed all the families of Saul and all the families of his son, Jonathan. Then he called one of his servants by the name of Ziba, and he asked Ziba, Ziba, I need you to go around door to door and find out if all the relatives of Saul and Jonathan are they blessed. Remember, Saul wanted to kill David, but David did not take it personal. He's willing to bless even every member of Saul family and Jonathan family. By the way, the covenant was not made between David and Saul, but it was made between David and Saul's son by the name of Jonathan. But David was willing to go an extra mile and bless even the sons, even the family of Saul, the people that he never made it a covenant with. I'm trying to show you after God has blessed you, there is no space for you to hold grudges in your heart. The blessings doesn't work out of a position of hatred and anger and unforgiveness. You've got to love everybody. The kingdom that we are in is founded on the foundation of love. That's why John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's why God says in Psalm 23, he will prepare the table before you. And guess what? The VVIP on the table are your enemies. So don't take things personal after God has blessed you because where you are going is much better than where you have been. Then Ziba said, there is one that is remaining that is not yet blessed by the name of Mephibosheth. He is now staying in Lodeba. As I told you, Lodeba is a place of no pasture. Lodeba is a place of no growth. Lodeba, it's like a cursed place. Everything that you plant in Lodeba doesn't grow. Everything that you try to do, no matter how hard you work in Lodeba, nothing comes into pass. As I'm speaking this morning, I know I'm speaking to somebody who might be going through their Lodeba season. Lodeba season, it's not a place whereby you put yourself in that place. In fact, Mephibosheth didn't choose to be in Lodeba. 
When you study the Bible, Mephibosheth, while he was still young, at the age of four or five years old, he had a nanny. A nanny used to take care of Mephibosheth as a baby. Then one day a messenger came back from the war and came to report that the soldiers has lost the battle. The enemy is coming to take over the city. And all the women in the city, they were frightened and everybody was just running away. And the nanny was carrying the baby on her back and when she ran away the baby slipped and fall at the ground and Mephibosheth was crippled from the spinal cord he could not walk from that moment it was not his fault that he was crippled as a baby it was not his fault that he grew up without a father it was not his fault that as the grandson of the king he did not benefit from the state allowance I'm trying to show you it is not your fault that some of you are in Lodeba this morning it is not your fault that your partner left you just like that it is not your fault that you are retrenched at your workplace Lodeba is not a place the people that are there they are not there because it is a fault but circumstances of life have put you in Lodeba you might say, Pastor, I'm not in Loreba. But I can tell you, all of us, one way or the other, we go through a season of Loreba. I call Loreba a season of somewhere in between. You are not even sure you are going backwards or you are going forward. It's a season of Loreba. And a lot of bar is an important season in our lives in order to teach us that where we come from is better than where we are going. And by the way, it's not your fault that you are in Lodeba. My amo abu pilo ko no billing in Lodeba. Not only sharp montung, everything was fine, and your partner just decided to go from a for a sweet sixteen or to go for a sugar mama, and he left you just like that, or they left you just like that. You did not plan to be in that situation. You woke up Monday morning going to work, only to find out you were at the least at the top of that list of the people that they are letting off from that company. You did not pray for that situation. You did not choose to be in that environment. Lord, the bar happened to you not because it was your choice but it's circumstances of life that put you in Lord, the bar. One way or the other all of us we pass through a season of Lord, the bar. Some of you, your parents could not contain you they threw you as a child inside the dustbin. And somebody from social services picked you up. You grew up in homes where you did not experience the love of a mother and a father. And where you are, you think you are rejected by God. That is the season of Lodaba. Some of you, you've been raped as a child. You've been molested as a child, you did not choose for that uncle or for that father or for that brother to do those things to you. Lord, the bar is that season in your life. It was not your choice. Circumstances of life have put you there. You might not be in Lord, the bar, but I can tell you one way or the other, the season of Lord, the bar can come into your life. Some of us, we are coming out of Lord, the bar as I'm speaking to you. It's an in-between season. Here's my point. Lodeba, it's not a permanent season. Don't pitch up your tent when you are in Lodeba. Don't build a double story house when you are in Lodeba. Lodeba is not your dwelling place. That's why David says, even though I walk not to dwell through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. People can speak words of curses. People can laugh at me. That is the form of evil when you are in Lodeba. Guess what? The Lord is with you even when you are in Lodeba. Lodeba is not your dwelling place. And Ziba came and told the king, there's one who is crippled, stays in Lodeba by the name of Mephibosheth. He's the son of your friend, Jonathan. 
and the king commanded that he must be brought into his house. And when Mephibosheth appeared before the king's palace, the Bible says he paid obeisance. To pay obeisance is when you bow down with your face before the king, not knowing what you have to say before the presence of the king. And the king said to Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, raise up your head and look at me. From today onwards, you have found favor with God. Not on your grounds, but on the grounds of the covenant that I made with your father Jonathan, just because you are relating to him by blood, that mercy and favor has fallen at your footsteps today. I know that you feel like God doesn't love you. I know that you feel rejected this morning. I know that you feel like the season of Lodabar is long overdue in your life. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the covenant that God made with our forefather, Abraham, in Genesis 12, he told Abraham, in you, Abraham, all the nation of the earth shall be blessed. Guess what? You are part of the nations of the earth. You qualify under the same blessings. That's why we sing a song. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed coming in. I am blessed going out because of the covenant that my father in heaven made with my forefather Abraham. There's mercy and favor at your footstep this morning as I speak. Anticipate and expect the mighty move of God in your life. The valley unto Mulimoyona all this time. I put a stop upon that season. There is a season of promotion. There is a season of the favor of God. There is a season where God takes you out of the valley and place your feet on the king's highway. That's why... David says, he doesn't do all these things for my name's sake, but he does them for his name's sake. Mephibosheth, you have, you have found favor and mercy. From this day onwards, I know unto Jabo Hoveka in Komazi every day. I know unto Jadi Vegbo Kavichi Udirles Chabo Saidurna Magi. But I'm here to tell you as from today, how Satole Otlo Jadi Jo because you are forced to eat them. But you will have a choice, a variety of what you want to eat in your life. Those who don't understand me, if you have if you have ever went to a buffet restaurant, a buffet restaurant, you don't just jump into the main course when you arrive. When you eat, there is first what we call the starters. After the starters, you go to the main course. After the main course, there's what we call a dessert. After dessert, there are after drinks that you have. Then you can depart the restaurant. Don't be in a hurry to finish the course. Just relax. All the meals that you paid at the entrance have been paid for. You don't have to stress about what you're going to eat. I'm reminded of one story about this man who booked a flight to the USA. And this flight, it was a, a, a what you call a business class kind of a ticket that they bought him. And this man was the first time he was inside a plane. He has never been inside a plane for the rest of his life. And now he's in a business class. A flight of about 18 hours. Now they are saving meals per sessions. In a plane, about two hour, three hour session, they give you certain meals. Now this man, he's seated in a business class. Uh, the air hostess comes, they serve meals. This guy says, no, I'm, I'm fine. After three hours, they serve the main course. This guy says, no, I'm fine. After that, they serve uh, dessert. This guy says, no, I'm fine. Then after about eight hours, they, one of the air hostess come to him. He said, my, my brother, what's, what's wrong? Are, are you not hungry or what's, what's, what's up with you? He says, no, unfortunately, I don't have the money to buy the food that you are saving. And the hostess told her, the ticket that you bought, it's inclusive of every meal that we are saving in this plane. 
the covenant that God made with your forefather Abraham, it's inclusive of all the meals in the table. When you are eating buffet, stop being in a hurry. You're going to eat at the king's table all the days of your life. When Mephibosheth had the story, how do I qualify to sit at the king's table? Look at what Lord Abba has done into his mind. He's already dead while he's still alive. I'm speaking to people this morning. Because they've already discarded themselves from the blessing of the Lord. Where God has put a comma, stop putting a full stop. Lord bar, it's a transit. We are passing by. There is a destination of wealth. There is a destination. Yeah, 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 yeah. The not the Lord bar season. You shall eat at the king's table all the days of your life. And Lord bar was forgotten in the mind of Mephibosheth. How to Allah book at the right of the book of 2 Samuel. Or Mephibosheth at at the king's table all the days of his life. Comma, but he was still lame at his feet. <laughs> you know, I, I, I believe or a Mephibosheth is the one who wrote that that song. Erratangwiopelaering. Uh, but they don't understand how I grew up. But now I'm seated at the table. In fact, I give a level of only the master's the fifteen, only PhD, only degree of this, only degree of this. But when we are seated at the table, we are all the same because the king's table accommodate us all in the kingdom of. God, we don't use other people as stepping stone, but God puts us in the same level as the other people. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the poor, for them is the kingdom of God. He was not saying the poor must wait to get to heaven in order to be blessed. But he was saying, blessed are they because the kingdom of the world uses them as stepping stone. But when they divert into the kingdom of God, they become equal like everybody else. Mephibosheth is now seated at the king's table. Lehe a holofezi, mara havan ze motafulen ya sohosi, otswana lebone bobohli. Don't throw in the towel yet. Your season, ya hor unne motafulen, is just around the corner. How ka uga the pressure ili too much is the sign, ya hor the blessing is closer. Mara how ka bona ulwana la, lidim le matimoni ya na that means your blessing is still too far. Mara the moment you see a giant kind of a blessing, know that your blessing is just around the corner. Don't discourage yourself based <coughs> on the history that you went through. In fact, some of you, you will even reject why you cried for them when they left you. You will feel like you wasted your tears when they rejected you. Because you thought they were the best thing that has ever happened to you. Hardly do you know that God has the best thing that has never ever happened into your life. Do not settle for second best while God has the best for you in your life. Mohar Habay Father, I thank you this morning. 
You have just confirmed to us that Lodeba is not a permanent place. Karapela, somebody who might be at the brink of throwing in the towel. Holy Spirit, Tsuseleza Moya, what Sulu fellow on the inside of them? I know it's hard. I know some are hitting the rock. But you are God who's still able to take us from the muddy clay and place our feet on the king's highway. That's why this morning we've got a song to sing that Jesus came down to my muddy clay. He lifted me up and he placed my feet on the king's highway. I bless you. I prosper you. I promote you. I elevate you. Let the sun shine upon your life right now. I revive the spirit of hope and faith on the inside of you. From this day onwards, Every step of your way, let it be ordered by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. It is done in heaven, and so it is upon our lives. In Jesus' name, and somebody say, Amen. My God, my God. Lord, the bar is not your dwelling place. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Before we close, I just want to pray for those who have never received the Lord as their personal Savior. I'll be doing a mistake to preach to you and not give you this Jesus that I have inside my heart. I love him so much. I, there's no way, there's no way I can turn away from Jesus. That's why one songwriter, he says, I don't feel no way he's tired. I've come too far not to turn back now. Guess what? Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe that Jesus can bring me this far just to leave me. He promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there with you. If you want to receive this Jesus, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Even me, I prayed the same prayer. Every preacher that you see, they prayed the same prayer. Nobody came to earth as a Christian. We all have to be saved by the blood of Jesus. Repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived before you. Forgive me, my Lord. Clean me now with the blood of Jesus and make me a brand new person. I open my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay forever. And I make you the Lord and the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name. And somebody say, Amen. Father, I seal this prayer, Gamaria Jesu. This prayer right now. Let the blood of Jesus be a cloud of fire hanging over their heads. Get to Allah the Tsevetsa. But no Satan has got to love a minister. Ella, get to Allah the Tsevetsa. Some more. Yeah, only the Holy Spirit shall be the leader and the guide of your life. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you also for joining us right now. Bobo Tlevala Fezango is at that confession. Get to look up for it. Just find a church that preaches faith. That preaches based on the word of God, which is the Bible. We don't preach opinions, but we preach the word of God. So find that church. If you can't find it, we will display the information of our church on the screen right now before we close. If, if you are around Tabazimbi or you are far away, I've seen people from Soshanguve coming to attend church where I preach. I've seen people from Rustenburg driving every weekend to attend church. I've seen people from Bela Bela, people from Lepalale coming to attend church. God has shown me in the spirit and it's happening. Since last year, it's happening. People are driving to come and hear the word of God. And I know something. If you are important, people will seek after you. Importance, I'm not speaking about the person. I'm speaking about the spirit that is on the inside of you. So we're going to display that information if you want to come, come and join us. Connect with us in any way and may God bless you. Let us meet tonight at 10 p.m. We are still continuing on communion with the blood of Christ. And God is still doing greater things in our lives. And I thank you so much for joining us. And may God bless you and keep walking by faith. My God. Thank you so much and may God bless you. Mm -hmm.